Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch. Today we're going to be checking out Make Human, a 3D tool for creating human character meshes. It's a lot like one I just covered a couple days ago, but that was a commercial product. This is a, um, a free tool, um, community driven. So uh, this is Make Human, and there's a couple reasons why I'm covering this. So first off, here's Make Human, where you can find it, makehumancommunity.org. It is called Make Human Community, not just Make Human, because they've bundled in a lot of the community provided tools and assets to make it a more complete product. Um, there is a new release. Uh, I'm not going to get into the details of what this release was all about, but they don't have a whole lot of releases. So this 1.2 alpha that was released, uh, I think it was December the 10th, uh, just basically improvements across the board, better integration with Blender, um, more of the community features are rolled into the primary, that kind of stuff. The important thing is you want to find the download link there. It's a little hidden. Um, Otherwise, you're going to get the older version. So if you're on Linux, the PPA is there. If you're on Windows, the build is there. Now, the one I covered earlier is called Character Creator 3. I would actually say it's more polished and creates slightly better meshes, especially for game style um, assets, but it's also literally infinitely more expensive. So you've got trade-offs there, but if you're looking for an alternative, I'll link this video down below. And then a bit of a tragic reason why I'm covering this is there is another option out there. So once upon a time, MakeHuman actually started life as a Blender plugin. It still tightly integrates with Blender, but it's a standalone product now. Uh, there is another product out there called Manuel Bastioni Lab uh, that was actually another plugin that did exactly the same thing. And tragically, it is dead. I mentioned this actually in my character creator video and a lot of people were like, oh, wait a minute, I never heard anything about this. And it's kind of understandable that nobody's heard about it because, well, the, the web page doesn't actually say anything. And it was a very strange sequence of events. Uh, but this is an article from CG Channel. And basically, it just shut down one day. Uh, so the end of last month, uh, he said, I need some funding and I'm going to do something for funding. And he did that on his Facebook page and just his Facebook page. And then a week later, he said, nope, not enough funding. I'm done pulling the plug. And that's kind of it. And then even more bizarre, um, the announcement that he made on Facebook. So on October 31st is when he launched the scheme. Uh, and then like a few weeks later, he did this Facebook post. And then here is the Facebook post. Or actually, I'm not logging into Facebook and Facebook can burn in a special kind of hell. But the reality is that post is gone too. So uh, Manuel Bastioni, it was an awesome alternative to make human. And for all intents and purposes, it seems to be done. So we're looking today at make human because, well, it is the sole survivor in this space in many ways. Um, it, again, it competed most directly with um, Manuel Bastioni Lab, and Manuel Bastioni Lab is gone. So, uh, don't get me wrong, Make Human is still a great product, but it actually gets more emphasis now because, uh, again, it's kind of the only free option in that world uh, for the most part. So, here we are. Uh, this is the primary editing environment. We are a little bit on the gender fluid side of things. I've got wireframe mesh up right now uh, just so that it isn't so obviously naked so that YouTube doesn't get really irritated with me. And I'm going to do things a little bit out of order here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to geometry and we're going to add a male casual suit. There we go. So now I'm going to turn wireframe off. There you see. So there is our gender fluid character with a suit on. So now I am not going to get in trouble for uh, nudity on YouTube. All right. So go back again. You would generally model the body first and then add clothing after the fact. Uh, but obviously I, I, I did it in a different order for very good reasons. So now you can switch a number of things out. So if we want gender, we can switch from female to male with the slider right there. I don't know why it, it scales the camera. That's a little strange. Uh, we can tweak the age down to baby to older. Baby is kind of weird. All right, so let's go around there. Uh, you can change the musculature across the board, ditto for weight, height, uh, proportions. I'm not really sure what proportions technically is. I guess it's like the length of your limbs. Uh, and then you can change the ethnicity here. So we can, you know, mix in some Asian or we can mix in some Caucasian and so on. So that is your base top level modeling. And then we can get into a whole lot of the specifics. So the gender here is where we would get into, uh, again, this is an area I'm leaving alone for this particular video, but just so you know, you do have fine tuned control over how your body's private bits do look. But again, YouTube. So let's move on. You've got a lot of also fine tuned control over how the face looks. So you can go re more rectangular, square, angular, um, you can add head fat and so on. We've got tweaks on the torso as well, arms and legs, finger length. We can randomize everything if we want. Uh, 
that's not what, something I'm going to use today. And pretty much that's it. So you would model out your main character until you got to where you want. And then you head over into the geometry land. And as you saw earlier, this is where we saw things like the clothing that we added on. So we want to give this guy some shoes. Just double click and there he's got some shoes. Over here we've got some uh, filters down. Uh, or we can just head on over here specifically. So if we want to give this guy a little bit of hair, uh, we can give him some hair. So there you go. You can also modify the teeth. Uh, you can change the overall topology. So if we want to make this person really muscular, so we could go male muscular and double click, double click. Might be a little slow on that one. Oh, I think I might've just made him female too. All right, come on. Okay, not sure why that isn't specifically applying, but let's just move on. I got control over how your eyebrows are drawn. So if I zoom in and pan down, we can see various different eyebrow options, eyelashes, tongue. Tongue obviously is useful if you have the mouth opening, but you see you've got, so the first layer is you kind of define the body and the overall body shapes, and then you sort of dress said body. There are uh, guides out there for bringing your own geometries in so that they actually will work with Make Human. Again, also what we saw is there is the community integration, which is actually going to get much cooler as you will see in just a second. But then when you are where you want to be, we can come in here and we can start working on materials. Uh, material specifically is skin material. And then we see here we can toggle, we can work on skin, hair, eyes, and eyebrows. Um, so look, we can look at just skin, so middle, there. And you know, you can basically use predefined settings for your character skin. Uh, and then we can get into posing and animating. Uh, default, there is no rig. So as you can see, we're in kind of an x-ray view of our model. If you are working for games, for example, you could pick game engine, and it will put in a relatively lightweight rig. Um, You'll notice there's hand by default, which I find a little weird for uh, for game rig. But anyways, we are now set. So there we have our rig in place. Um, so if you're going to export this out to uh, a game engine, you are good to go at this point in time. And then we can come into posing him. So you basically can apply whatever pose you want now that you have a rig attached. And you could start a default pose. Now, uh, where did it go? There is a... There it is, T-Pose. Most of the time when you're exporting out to a game engine and you're going to do your animation there, because of course there is no keyframing animation here, uh, you probably just want to export out in the standard T-Pose. And as you see, there is a standard T-Pose. And we're kind of coming to the end, to be honest. Uh, so you've created your character, you've uh, rigged your character, you've dressed your character. Uh, now you can go ahead and, if you so wish, render your character and it will create a simple image version of it. And you saw it was definitely very quick. Um, but I, I don't see a whole lot of use for rendering directly in this guy unless you want to, you know, just create uh, an image you want to share as opposed to just doing a screenshot or something. But um, you got some settings here, nothing, nothing overwhelming. Uh, got some utilities here. Again, nothing too overwhelming. Uh, but the one that is important, where did we go? Where did we go? Where did we go? I'm like, it's not on our community. Uh, you do have to go in and, oh yeah, community, and you go to socket and accept connections. And if you turn that guy on, you can turn on a plugin inside of Blender and then the two can communicate directly. So if you wanna have a direct Blender communication, uh, you can do it that way. Now, coincidentally, if you're, all right, all right. Uh, if you're good with it, you can also come here and do an export and your options for exporting out of MakeHuman are Collada or FBX, which are the two major Autodesk formats. So Max Maya and so on. Uh, you've got the MHX2 um, format, which is the primary format you will use to export out to Blender. And Blender has an importer and exporter available for MHX2 formats. That is basically their own make human format. Um, Wavefront OBJ format, which is for static meshes only, but is pretty much universally supported. They have a direct exporter for the Ogre game engine and STL formats as well. Uh, you can also export as BVH rigs, which is a pretty standard uh, file format for motion capture software. Okay, so let's head on back over here to community and I'm gonna show you some, uh, da, da, da. okay, just download the damn thing. Download, synchronize. I don't know which button I need to hit. So I'm just gonna go ahead and update everything until we get the version. I just wanted to trigger this guy down here, but basically this is where the community really part starts to shine. So you see over on the left-hand side, we've got filtering options. Um, we're, we're downloading all of the various different assets or, or 
table of contents of the available assets out there right now. But I'm going to show you some really cool functionality. And this is where make human becomes make human community. This is where the community integration actually comes in. And give it a second. All right, so the database is now synchronized. By the way, there is a more sophisticated way of doing it than just hitting every button on screen, but hitting every button on screen has proven effective for me, so I never bothered learning the right way. Okay, so then what you do is you come down here and you pick what you are looking for. So if you are looking for some new clothing to put on your model, you would come in here, you would pick clothing. Uh, then you can pick the different subset types available from clothing. So, um, Gloves, let's say gloves, not genitalia, definitely not genitalia today. And we can update the list. And then what you see here is it goes off, it searches for and finds uh, the, well, there's six results of different kinds of gloves that are available for us. So if I wanted a set of MMA fighting gloves, for example, you can see here what license they are. So CC0 or CC BY, that's an attribution license. That's a do what the hell you want license. Over here, you can see a preview of it. And if you want it, go ahead and click download. It will, of course, download it, it finish downloading. And then if we head on back over to geometries uh, and we go to clothing and there. So click and our guy now has a set of MMA fighting gloves on. Got a bit of a graphical glitch going on, but let's pretend that's not happening. So this community aspect is really awesome. It gives you the ability to basically share with and um, you know, acquire its community resources. And this is one of those things that's kind of new to make human. And I think this is going to bring it a long way because one of the challenges is going to be bringing in those different poses, bringing in those different, especially if, if you have limited artistic ability, you can really kind of work off of the community's abilities. And you see right here, you've got, um, so clothing, poses, targets, teeth, eyebrows, eyelashes, skin, proxies, materials, models, rigs, and expressions. So if we need a new, let's actually see what they've got for new rigs. And you just update the list, and there you see they've got a bunch of different rigs set up. So here is, for example, a Unity rig. Uh, so if you're working with Unity, and of course down here we have a penis rig, because of course we do. And then over here we'll go back and we'll see poses, for example, what other poses were available to us. And you will see there are there's, uh, 134 of them, actually including three sexy poses. So as you see, the community aspect of it is really quite cool. And then again, click it and you can see a preview of what that pose would actually look like uh, or that asset you're about to download would look like. And I think this is really the future star of Make Human, this community aspect. It's kind of neat to see, and I really hope to see more and more people kind of come in and contribute to it because that will ultimately grow and make, hum make, make human a more and more awesome product as time goes on. So that is essentially it. Again, I don't know why my graphics flaked out right there. Uh, so I, I won't bother debugging that at this point. You've got a pretty good idea of exactly what we were dealing with uh, when we were dealing with Make Human. Uh, again, it, you know, compare the results you get out. I find um, Character Creator probably creates more realistic looking. You also have a little bit more fine-tuned control over the meshes and the textures, etc., directly inside of the program. But in terms of ease of use, uh, anybody can use Make Human, and especially as that community starts filling in more and more features, those things get easier and easier to access. So this is hands down the easiest Character Creator of the two, or the three if you included uh, Manuel Bastioni Labs in that list. Hopefully, that community really takes off. Uh, and then, as I kind of alluded at earlier, there is is uh, real-time integration with Blender so you can have it so that this model, as you change it uh, over here in Make Human, will automatically update live in your Blender version. I don't know if there's a 2.8 version of the plugin yet. Uh, I don't think so. 2.8 plugins are pretty early right now, so I don't. I wouldn't expect that. But anyways, that is uh, Make Human. Again, available at makehumancommunity.org. Links down below. If you want to grab the newest version, though, once again, make sure that you come into this link right here. Scroll on down to where you find where to download and get that particular version. Coincidentally, that version, at least on the Windows side of things, is about a 330 megabyte zip file extracted out, and then there is an installer inside of that as well. And yeah, that is it. Again, I will toss all the links down below. So. Sorry, to, sad to hear about uh, Manuel Bastioni Lab. If you got any more details about what exactly happened there, I would love to know, but 
yeah, that one's sad that that kind of ended down. Uh, but on the bright side, again, we have this great open source tool option, Make Human, on the other end. So, you know, it lessens the blow a great deal. Have you used Make Human? Are you going to now that you've checked it out? Is it, uh, you know, sufficient for your needs or do you need something a little bit more advanced like uh, Character Creator or Daz or, or something similar? Uh, let me know what you think. Comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.